and welcome back to the farmhouse. Today we are going to talk about something that I absolutely love and have a true passion about. I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can create a butterfly garden right in your backyard and help save the monarch butterflies. Before we jump into exactly how to set up a butterfly garden in your backyard, let's talk a little bit about why we want to save the monarch butterflies. The monarch butterflies are truly an amazing butterfly. They have one of the longest migrations of any animal. They migrate all the way from Canada to Mexico every single year. Now it's not the same butterfly that does this. They do go through their life cycle and the fourth generation is the one that will make the migration. Recent studies have also shown that the monarch population is declining and it is declining at a really fast rate. And a lot of this has to do with habitat destruction and building and the use of pesticides. So when you are creating your pollinator garden or your butterfly garden, the number one thing you wanna make sure is that you are not using any pesticides or herbicides or anything like that. They can harm the pollinators. Pollinators are so, they're tiny insects and they cannot ward off all of those yucky, gross things that are in pesticides and herbicides. Another thing that is helping in encouraging the decline of the monarch butterfly is really just the destruction of habitat. And the milkweed plant, whether it's common milkweed, swamp milkweed, any type of milkweed is the sole host plant for the monarch butterfly. And with less and less milkweed, the monarchs have less and less food to raise their young. Before you start creating your monarch butterfly garden, there's a couple things that you should consider. And here are some questions that you can ask yourself before you start. The first one is, are you in the monarch migration flight pattern? And this is really easy to find out. You can just do a quick search on Google for monarch migration and you can see where the migration, the monarchs migrate across the United States. A lot of the monarchs migrate on the East Coast. So we are in Maryland right now and plan on moving to Virginia. So both definitely on the East Coast and in the, migra the monarch migration pattern. Besides looking at the migration pattern, you might also want to look at when will the monarchs be in your area? Humans can, civilians, or as we like to call them, civilian scientists, can help the monarchs. And if you're not around during that time frame, you're not gonna be able to help. So it's also a good idea to look at past history to see when the monarchs are in your area. Now we know some things about the monarchs, but let's start talking about your yard and your garden. And the first thing you want to determine is what zone you live in. Now, determining your zone and your growing season is going to help you determine what native pollinator plants you want to include in your garden. You can do this by doing a quick search on Google for your zone. One of our best favorite sites to go to is the USDA Hardiness website. I can link it below for you. Um, and you type in your zip code and it will tell you what zone you're in. The next thing you want to determine is what type of soil that you have. Soil is the key component in making sure that your plants are thriving. So you want to know what type of soil you have. You can either take a soil sample and send it off to a lab, or you can do an at-home soil test. I have tons of resources on soil testing on our website and I will link them below for you. The next thing to do is to walk around your yard and pick your spot for your monarch garden. Now you want to find a spot that gets almost full sun so that we're talking six plus hours of sun every day. The best way to do this is to do what we call sun mapping and again I have a great article on our website all about sun mapping and how to determine the best place for a garden in your yard. That's linked below for you. Once you have found that spot for your monarch garden then we need to start talking about the plants. A common recipe for plants in a butterfly garden is three types of milkweed. We like, in our area, we like to stick with common milkweed, swamp milkweed, and butterfly weed. Then you want five native plants that will bloom in the spring. These plants can either be perennial or they can be annual. Know that annual plants will have to be planted again every year. Then you want five plants that bloom in the summer. Again, these can be perennials or they can be annuals. And then you want five plants that bloom in the fall. 
you want to make sure that you have you always have something blooming in your garden to provide nectar for your grown monarch butterflies you also want to make sure you have lots of milkweed in your garden to provide habitat for those baby caterpillars because the caterpillar is only going to munch on your milkweed plants if you want a full list of native pollinator plants or butterfly plants that grow in your area, I have linked a few websites below that will give you a detailed list of all of those native plants that grow in your area and they also benefit the butterflies. Now you know where you're going to start your butterfly garden and you know what plants you are going to use, so it is time to start sourcing those plants. There are some awesome websites where you can buy kits that have all of the plants together for you and they will mail them to you or you can visit your local nurseries and source the plants yourself. Whatever you do, make sure the plants have not been treated with any pesticides or herbicides and make sure that they are grown organically. That way you are providing the best and the most effective habitat for your pollinators. Once you have your butterfly garden set up, you can enhance it by adding places for your butterflies to take shelter during the rain. You can add little pools of water or little pools of mud to give your butterflies some extra nutrients and some extra things that they need. You can also supply dark colored rocks for them to land on and to warm up on those cool spring and fall mornings. If you want to learn more about how to raise monarch butterflies in your backyard, everything from collecting eggs to feeding your baby caterpillars to releasing your adult butterflies, check out our ebook, How to Raise Monarch Butterflies in Your Backyard. I have linked it below for you. You can also visit our website to find tons of more great articles on butterflies, monarch butterflies, and raising them in your backyard. There are articles on milkweed and articles on different fertilizers and stuff that you can use in your yard. If you have any questions about monarchs, please make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Make sure you head on over to Instagram to check out our monarchs. And if you want to know more about monarchs, I'll link a video here for you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me at the farmhouse today, and we will talk to you soon.